Alongside Brett Tabo, author of Unpacking Greatness, a Chiefs book you can find, on, find online, also a longtime high school offensive coordinator. Brett, you brought this one to my attention. I thought it was pretty fascinating. Kind of fits into the details of the details, uh, with what we go with every single week. But a bread and butter concept. This is the third play of the game for the Chiefs, a passing play, but kind of shows the greatness of both Mahomes and Kelsey and also goes into the details of what makes this offense work. Yeah, and, and I know the the big storylines from the other night were, you know, kind of the um, emergence of the running game. Uh, I think I, I heard um, on the radio today that the, the Chiefs had 35 rushes and only 30 passes, which is rare for them. Um, but this, as you said, this is a, a bread and butter concept, you know, where the, the, the Chiefs have so many different ways to create these flood concepts with different parts of the field. And, and it does look very easy, very simple, but – um, you know, as, as we'll see, Kelsey and, and Mahomes just operating at an at a extremely high level and making it look a whole lot more simple than it is. Yeah, you mentioned this flood concept, and uh, the first part of that is so many guys flooding toward the bottom of the screen trying to get defenders down there. But talk us through really quickly the defense for the Jets and kind of what we're looking for here to kind of parse out the details of what makes this play work. Sure thing. So uh, just to, in general, the definition of a flood concept is is having – uh, three levels of a route in one third of the field. Um, in this particular, it's it's been called a pylon concept. Uh, that I've seen it called. People have different ways of of obviously, um, you know, naming these concepts. But um, so you're gonna uh, have a, a, a deep or, or a corner route that's going to the front pylon by Kadarius Tony. Uh, Travis Kelsey is gonna run um, an out route. Uh, uh, an intermediate out route, usually anywhere from from 12 to, to 16 yards, and then you you you're going to have a flat route. So the, you, you, there you have your three levels, and the Jets are going to play. And I think they played a lot of this the other night. Really hard to tell from the TV copy, but I know Andy Reid alluded to it a little bit. They played a lot of zone, and they were dropping linebackers deep, trying to take away the the crosses and the deep outs, but they're going to play a four deep three under coverage here. And the chiefs are going to, um, you know, take advantage of that here with this concept. So let's get into the details with Kelsey and how he plays this so well. So let's highlight him here and kind of talk me through what he does. That's really good on this play. Sure. So he, he's going to short motion in to protect his release a little bit and get, a, you know, what's called kind of a stacked uh, alignment. Um, and he's going to, Right here is, is you have this uh, Will Linebacker highlighted. Um, so this Will Linebacker's responsibility is to basically play a curl flat because you got four deep defenders. And um, what Kelsey does here um, is he goes inside of this, this Will Linebacker here. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the Will forget about him. So now as we're going to see, the will, once he goes inside, he's like, okay, I get help on the inside. I got the mic there. He's running across and route or the mic's going to handle him. So now he's going to chase the flat. And what that's going to do is open up that intermediate space, as we'll see. So he's playing the leverage well here. So he gets by this guy. And then we see mm -hmm. also something from Patrick Mahomes here. Uh, and you point this out to me. Seeing when guys are open and seeing if they're not open, and this is all based on the defender, great eyes here from Patrick Mahomes. So absolutely, if you're looking at this here and you see a defender there, you're thinking, okay, well, that space is is not open. Uh, it's not available to throw. But what Mahomes understands here and what anybody that, that is successful in the NFL and even high levels of college football understand is you're rarely going to see a throwing window without a defender present. Um, but what he is so good at, is understanding the hip angles of defenders here. So you see the corner to the bottom of the screen, his hips are pointed down the field towards the end zone away from the line of scrimmage. And what that is, um, you know, tells him is this defender, this corner cannot take away this intermediate space because his hips are down the field. So he's going to, as we're going to see it, he's going to recognize it. The corner is going to recognize it, but he's going to be too slow because he's got to put on the brakes and turn his hips and come back to it. And this is why we talk so much about being complimentary players here. Kadarius Tony runs his pylon route that you talked about and runs it hard. He's getting this guy's hips turned upfield so that he can't come back and get to Travis Kelsey's route. So a good job by him as well. And this is kind of what we talk about. Sometimes the Justin Watson's the world and the MBS is the world. People say, hey, they have one or two catches. They didn't do much. This is what they're doing on these plays. They're helping create space for a guy like Travis Kelsey. And as we see, Patrick Mahomes is going to throw this ball literally right at this defender. 
uh, on this target right here where Kelsey's about to go. Yeah, as you said, some, sometimes you're the assist guy in a concept. you got to blow the top off the coverage. Uh, and, and it's quite possible, I think Donovan Smith gets beat here a little bit, and Holmes may feel a little bit of pressure. It's quite possible that he lets that thing go to the, the third-level route to, to Tony um, because technically he does have him beat there uh, because he's, he's even and he can, you know, depend on the personnel to win. But as you said, he throws that right there at the defender's back. And because of the defender's hips are turned, there's no way he's going to be able to turn and play that, that intermediate route by Kelsey. Is that an old coaching cliche? If you're even, you're leaving. Have you, have you heard that one before? Y yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. And, and obviously it depends on your personnel. If your guy's even and he's better then then he's going to be able to win. But if the corner's better then that, that's not really a good cliche, but guilty is charged there, man. Again, this is not what we see normally from the broadcast view, but it is crazy because this looks like an easy completion. Of course, they can play this pass. Mahomes is basically throwing us at this defender's back shoulder, but watch how it goes because he knows the hips. Can't stop. Kelsey is there. Perfect timing. This is how the Chiefs operate. 16 yards to get this first down. So looking at the details here again, Brett, uh, I guess wrap it up for me. What do you think about this concept, the flood concept, and how the Chiefs execute it, and how much of this is just – Mahomes and Kelsey being Mahomes and Kelsey on this first pass of the game and being able to execute what they normally do against the New York Jets. Well, I think that number one, they're just so good at it. As you said, it's it's a bread and butter. And and I was going through and, and writing the, you know, the unpacking greatness about the, the third down offense in 2021. There's just so much of these and there's so much carryover with the read. Uh, they, they, you know, it doesn't matter what formations you're running out of, what personnel groups, the read is, is similar. Um, and, you know, these guys are just so good. And, and Kelsey is just generational. Obviously, Mahomes is as well. But Kelsey is just generational at understanding leverage and understanding coverage. Uh, and I just I know, Jesse, you, you sent me a clip uh, last week. I think it was a sprint out um, and Kelsey was supposed to run a corner route. And he basically stops because there's somebody on the outside. Um, so when you take, you know, concepts that these guys have so many reps at and they're so cerebral in terms of understanding coverage and understanding leverage, they do make it look really simple. You're like, OK, well, that's a high school flood concept. You know, everybody runs that. But as we've you know gotten into here, um, there's a whole lot more to it. Absolutely. Well, part of the reason the Chiefs succeeded there, maybe part of the reason the Jets went a lot of man coverage late and got a little bit pushy with their hands uh, in some of those uh, late down calls. But uh, the Chiefs succeed on this particular play. It's the reason the Chiefs and Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes succeed on a lot of plays, always seeming to find each other. That's going to wrap up. For I, got, uh, Go I was going to say, I got, I got suckered into that some DraftKings boost for a 22 and a half yard reception from Travis Kelsey. So I really wish he would have broken that tackle there. <laughs> Cause that cost me some money that would have hit, but uh, nonetheless, you know, just, uh, just a good play. One more tackle broken and one more richer Brett Tabo. Uh, <laughs> you can live off those royalties from the book, Brett. Yeah. Uh, that's that's to wrap it up for the details for Brett. This is Jesse. Be sure to tune in for another episode next week.